Vegas Aces, Alicia Clark on their club, just adding to their arsenal of weapons. She does her research. She studies. She studies the game, and that's what makes her so competitive. But then she brings that competitive edge because she studied you. Imagine every time you go into a game and your defender takes away your first and second move. Clark just takes it away. Clark is a veteran in this league and a three-point shooter that you have to find. Her pursuit of excellence put her on a WNBA court. Consummate professional, always well prepared, great in the locker room. When you have a player like her, just her personality, her leadership, her work ethic, things like that are contagious. She is like a tool that can do everything, or a hybrid club on a golf course. Talk about the epitome of three and D. That is Alicia Clark. I mean, she's a worker. She's super diligent. You know, she cares about the details, um, and that's what makes her different. Alicia Clark has become an essential cog to their championship hopes. She can literally guard one through five, and to have that strength and yet to be so undersized and sometimes be that big guard as well, it's so key. The irritational person guarding the basketball, and I say that all the time. Alicia Clark denying Gray at the rim. And now she's my teammate. I'm just like, the little things I used to not let, I'll be like, go do that. That's what Alicia Clark does. She makes those big defensive stops. We don't win championships in 218 and 220 without Alicia Clark. She takes pride in what her role is, and I think being that defensive glue, whether that was for Seattle or Washington or now us, is really a separation factor. She's the reigning sixth woman of the year. Like if I'm coming off the bench, I'm going to come off the bench for a young player in their prime. Other than that, there's no other player in this league that brings and offers what I do. Clark for the three. My goodness, stepping up when they need her the most. My family was a music family. There's always music playing in the house, everybody's always singing. Like any event we had, any gathering, whether it was just cooking dinner or coming over on the weekends for dinner, there's always music playing. My mom was a Barbara Streisand cover artist. She played piano in uh, different nightclubs, and my dad was a southern rock and roll uh, rhythm and blues singer. It was a lot of fun, really loved doing it, especially with him. Brought a lot of joy to both of us, you know, just to be around each other and be able to do what we love. My sisters played sports, my brother played sports growing up in high school and stuff, but their passion was always music. But for me, <laughs> you know, I tried to like join the group and be that way, like I was taking choir and doing all these things, and I was like, this is not it. Going into freshman year uh, was the first time I was like, okay, this sports is what I want to do. So I played volleyball and ran track and got into basketball because I was like, I need something to do during the winter time when I can work out, keep me in shape for track season. You know, I moved to Tennessee, which is freaking women's basketball mecca. And these girls have been playing since they were like five years old. We checked out a few different schools and this lady helped us to finally pinpoint Mount Juliet High School. They had hyped me up coming from Kansas that, oh, this six foot forward that's like really athletic and crazy skilled and I was sitting here like, what? The screen's happening in the middle of the floor and they just happen on the elbow. The people that deserve the credit for Alicia Clark's career are two high school coaches because they're the ones that taught her the fundamentals. I could tell she had tremendous footwork, but she couldn't hit a three footer. And I think every kid we had on the team when Alicia showed up had better skills than she had. But none of them had the athleticism she had and none of them had the desire and work ethic that she had. It really took her from November when she arrived her sophomore year till January, she became a dominant player. A lot of people really showed up and started following our team when she was here playing. It really, the crowds became bigger. They would leave after the girls game and not even watch the boys game. Most of them were here for the entertainment of watching her. She'd put the whole team on her back and the, the whole team would do things that they'd never done before just because of her. She was that piece that would come in and put it all together. We kept her kind of in the post area where she could one dribble score and where she could post you up. She was great with her body maneuvering and setting people up. You had to double team her to stop her. She was murdering these bigger girls, and it was through her footwork and her ambidextrous nature of being able to lay up with the left hand, even though she's right-handed. She was doing it all. I mean, I was blown away. By the time senior year came around, because again, right, like I'm a fast learner, I, I put in the work and I learned from my coaches, and, and I think that's the year that I just kind of blossomed. I mean, she was Mount Juliet's like basketball queen. She has this voice 
this power that our family has. You know, when you speak, people listen. She had that on the floor. My dad, he was at every one of her games, and he's always the loudest person in the arena. You can hear him over everyone else. The whole game, he's yelling his daughter's name, and he's yelling out on the floor. And I said, Alicia, you need to tell your dad to go stand over on the other side of the gym when we're playing games. She always knew that he delivered it with the best possible intention and all of the love, you know, because he wanted her to be everything he saw on her. In USA Today's Prep Top 25, the tiny town of Mount Juliet has a girls hoops team ranked fifth in the nation. Alicia Clark led them with 27 points, 11 rebounds. The Mount Juliet Lady Bears ranked third in the USA Today poll. Alicia Clark inside, she gets the two and the foul. She finished with 17 points, the Lady Bears roll. She definitely was the powerhouse that took them to the state championship. She was tremendous and, and, and winning a state championship with her on the team and her lead it couldn't have ended any better for me or for, for those girls. No question who the MVP was. Miss Basketball winner Alicia Clark turned in a special performance. She played all 32 minutes with 27 points and 19 rebounds. Mount Juliet finishes the season an amazing 37 and 1. From the time she was a sophomore in high school to junior to senior, she has proven everybody wrong. It's kind of like she had a permanent chip on her shoulder. Congratulations to Mount Juliet. Alicia Clark, the tournament MVP and Miss Basketball in Class AAA, and she's headed to Belmont. As one of the leaders at Belmont, what did you say in huddles? Get the ball to Alicia. That was the story of Belmont. That's how we went to the championship. She ends up being the MVP of that conference. Two years, a freshman, sophomore. And I remember seeing her on TV, and she was playing Georgia, and they couldn't stop her. It was nothing she really couldn't do in the post. And that's when Coach Stark uh, challenged her to learn how to dribble. The ball handling wasn't really her strength. So she challenged her to stop working on mic and drills and all the layup drills you know how to do with both hands and work with the guards. And that's when her game started to develop. You know, she's like, listen, if you are like serious about wanting to play professionally, like I think you have a shot. She's like, but you're going to have to work and expand your game. Like, you're not going to be able to play a post player at the pros. Like, you're just, you're too little. It's just the reality of it. And she was just honest with me. She's like, you need to be playing against the best competition in the country. She transfers to Middle Tennessee. They kind of cultivate that energy of guard workouts. And then she becomes like a full rounded guard post player. Junior and senior year, the floodgates opened. My coach put me in a great position, demanded excellence for me every single night. The basket plays up, scores! During those years, I saw like, okay, you have so much more room to grow, you have so much more potential. And that's where I fell in love with the process of getting better. Clark spins up with the left hand, she'll score. I think that's what people don't realize how great Alicia Clark was. Not only did she get 17, 1800 points or two years that she was here, those young ladies that were playing with her, they all were a thousand point scores. Alicia not only got her points, but she made sure the rest of them got their points. You know, she was all about winning. You know, here's a 5'10 post player out here giving work to all these All-Americans, projected first round draft picks. Nobody expected that from me, but that was the belief that I had in myself. The most valuable player. And it gave me an opportunity to play professionally. Going into the draft, I had people that were thinking I was going to go somewhere in the top 10 in the first round for sure. The first pick in the 2010 WNBA. And then sitting there in the draft room and like, first round coming, the pick that they said I was going to go comes and goes. With the 10th pick in the 2010 WNBA. In that moment, I literally remember sitting there at the table and I'm like choked up because I'm like, one, am I going to get drafted? Two, here they go doubting you again. With the 17th pick in the 2010 WNBA draft, the San Antonio Silver Star select, Alicia Clark from Middle Tennessee State University. When my name finally got called, you know, just what brought me back out of it was just seeing the joy on my parents' faces. All her career, she's been told what she can't do. You're too short, you gotta go to Belmont to play, nobody else wanted her to play. At Middle Tennessee, leading the country in scoring the last two years. You've been the it girl on your team. How's it gonna be now playing with a star like Becky Hammond being a complimentary player? I'm a team player, and so whatever my role is, I'm going to take it on and make sure I do the best. We always valued second round picks, and a lot of them made our team. 
I had noticed Alicia Clark at Middle Tennessee. She had a presence, especially in the post area, was, was crafty, strong. Going into San Antonio that first year, I was overwhelmed because you're gonna have to be a guard and this is what you're gonna transition into. You're gonna be, a, you know, our project. Like I'm going against freaking Becky Hammond on the perimeter and players who played a guard their entire life. Perimeter play, she calls swings, get below the white line. And getting burnt, getting worked. But I'm like, I don't want this to defeat me. Be sharp, just finish it off. And I felt like I was getting better, you know, as, as camp went on and then, you know, cuts start coming. I was the last cut. We talked about what she would have to do maybe to play the league. You know, you'd have to develop a three-point shot. You know, you need to maybe define yourself as a defender, you know. And you can do that by going overseas. You can do that by, you know, maybe investing in, in, in understanding what you got to do to be in this league. But the truth is, you're not coming from here. Her agent called me the next year and said, any chance she'd want her back? I said, I'd love to have her back. But again, it's not going to be an easy lineup to make. Brought her in, and again, she's the last. I cut her a second time. They want to keep a bigger player. And I was like, I can't change my height. So at that point, I was like, I'm good on the W. Like, they keep telling me things that, like, I can't fix, you know, that I'm not, I can't change. Like, I'm doing this, and if it's not good enough, I don't know what else I can do. We're built to be better than our best. Good, better, best. Never let it rest. So your good is your better, and your better is your best. That was my dad. My dad would say that to us all the time. Even before I was like anywhere decently good, <laughs> they thought I was the best player in the world. That for me meant a lot. In their eyes, I had already made it to this level. What I give AC a lot of credit for is A, her resiliency, her belief in herself. You get cut twice, a lot of people are like, yeah, no, I'm done. But her pursuit of excellence really put her on a WNBA court. It was crucial to me sticking to it and, and just really giving it another go. You know, we've got some young pieces that we're extremely excited about and we think there's a high ceiling for them. I couldn't have had a better group of veterans coming into this league than I did my rookie year in 2012. They were amazing human beings and the way that they poured into me is the reason why I've been able to sustain as long as I have in this league because of the things that they taught me and the way that they encouraged and pushed and challenged me. And being a sponge as a rookie is one of the best things you can ever do. And I think she recognized the special people that were there, the all-stars, the champions, the legends. There's Hall of Famers on that team. With Tina, she didn't have to take me under her wing and pour into me, I'm this little, <laughs> 5'10", old post player that's like, you know, here in this league, she could have poured into anybody and she chose to pour into me. Alicia, I want you to unpack your bags. I'm telling you, I'm serious. That made me feel so important because it's like, she saw me. And, you know, when you have somebody like her <laughs> validating you, um, I mean, it speaks volumes. You belong here. You're one of the hardest working players. So if you exude the confidence yourself that we have in you, you'll be here as long as you want to, all right? And she knew like that was the switch that I needed to be able to like grow. For Seattle to be really good, they need to upgrade their three position. Well, instead, Alicia Clark just upgraded her game. She has gotten a lot better over the course of the last two years. Superman trap, and then Alicia Clark was the benefactor. I'll never forget the conversation I had with Jenny Busick, and she was like, listen, if you can learn to be a perimeter stopper, you'll have a place in this league for a very long time. There are some great athletes, and to be able to, day in and day out, make it very, very hard for them to score or be uncomfortable for 40 minutes is huge. Great defense by Alicia Clark. One of the unsung heroes on this team this year. I accept the job to go to Seattle, and I'm excited. And one of the reasons I'm excited is I have watched this growth of Alicia Clark. And I call her up and I said, just to be sure you understand, you will not be cut by this man again. And she had modeled herself into maybe the best defensive player in the league. Was it over the top intercepted? There's that trap working again. The things that don't get tracked is when she's 
on those players, their, their percentages drop drastically. I mean, she's one of the, probably the best uh, defender in this league. She's strong, she's physical. You know, it's like having a little bodyguard everywhere I go. Just continues to build year after year. She's first in the WNBA in three-point percentage. 47% entering this game, and now three of five tonight. When 2018 hit, listen, the confidence that we had as a group, I don't care who you put in front of us, we knew nobody stood a chance. She was such an integral part of that championship team in 218 that we had. She became a big time shot maker. Clark tees it up. Truth! How big has Alicia Clark been tonight? Seattle Storm, your 2018 WNBA champion! To be there in that moment, like I was just so overwhelmed. That seven-year journey was completed with that championship. Alicia Clark, to me, embodied Seattle basketball. My dad was extremely proud of her. He was like, you know, I got three boys, you know, and I, I never thought that one of my daughters would be the professional athlete in the family. He wanted her to know how well she did, how proud of her we were, that we loved her and cared for her. Just seeing the, the joy and the pride on their faces, they've been there for all the big moments. And so for them to be there for this one, it was really, really special. It's no secret that the WNBA has been on the forefront in the fight for social justice for many years. For me, 2020 was the first time I think I found my voice as an advocate. Being on the court every day, having our season dedicated to the Say Her Name campaign, and having the name across our jerseys allowed us to play for something bigger than ourselves. I don't care if you're upset. I don't care if your feathers are ruffled. I don't care if it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable. This is the reality. As the WNBA, we are about inclusion. Um, you know, we are about equality. And so to have somebody a part of our league owning a team that opposes the equality of black lives just doesn't make sense. And she needs to go. Our dad um, was a Black Panther, original. He always spoke his truth and how he felt and how injustice with other people wasn't right. So that also was instilled into all of our children. My purpose is bigger than basketball. I'm here to help implement change and make people feel seen and valued and loved and show what that looks like. On Friday, um, it's my fifth annual toy drive with Seattle Children. I've just been blown away over the years just by all the support. It started off as just something small when I was visiting the hospital and I was just like, if I could, you know, maybe just help a little bit. I mean, you know, if I can get a few people to bring a couple of toys for the playroom, you know, then that's, that'll be awesome. Oh man, AC is, her heart is so pure. It, it is so giving and I remember when she played in Seattle, she was honestly the first player that I kind of saw that inspired me to want to continue to get out in the community when she did her tour drive there and how everyone was so bought into it. When I got to bring her those toys, um, you could just see on her face like how much it meant to her because she spent so much time at that hospital with those kids. You know, that's just who she is. She cares. No, the kids at the hospital, like on delivery day. Yeah. Yeah. The smiles on their faces just for something this simple. You guys have no idea how much this means. Seattle was a place of comfort for me. You know, it was home. I was able to grow there as, as a player, as a woman. In a year, we will never forget the Seattle storm on the team we will always remember. They are your 2020 WNBA champion. And so to have to say goodbye to people that were like family, a community that has supported you, it was extremely hard. But there was, you know, that sense of like, it's time for a change. When I left Seattle, I knew wherever I went next, I wanted to still be able to compete for a championship. The team in Washington that I was going to in 2021, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to do that. The second AC showed up, she changed this place. Unfortunately, she was injured the first year, but for me, it actually really helped me because we had each other in the whole rehab process. We 
saw the daily grind that each person was going through and it was just kind of able to lift me up, especially because I had been rehabbing what felt like forever. So having her like saved me, gave me that boost. And I kind of like forced her to be my veteran because I just knew how much she brought to the Seattle team. So when I saw that I was going to be on the same team as her, I was like, oh, this is a phenomenal opportunity for me. And I wanted to take full advantage of it. Even when she wasn't on the court, the coaching that she provided, the little tidbits she would give in a scout uh, was just so crucial. She took us from a mediocre defense to the best defense in the league. Like, that was her. Into Harrison, she's double, taken away by Clark. I mean, that's big time defensive work there by the Mystics. Yes, we had great defenders, but we were missing that piece, that person on the floor that would coach you up, that just knew every play the other team was running. She has just been masterful like that. And that's why we were able to win such huge games, especially the ones against the Aces. Yeah, she killed us because we, you know, we're, we're worried about all these other people. And I think she had 20 on us of like six of seven from three or something like that. You know what I mean? And I remember the coaches being like, what the hell? Like, what are we supposed to do? And we didn't, we didn't know either. Oh, Bones, 20 points. Get going, girlfriend. Get going. <laughs> hey, good luck. I'm watching as much as I can. Love you, bye-bye. We would always make sure that that phone call was made because she needed to know that we were behind her 100%. And Dwayne did most of the talking. Hey, well, y'all better run him off that court. Then get him tomorrow. You know, he was always just like full of life. He lit up any room he was in. His laughter was like infectious. <laughs> Man. What are you doing, Alicia Clark? Y'all kicking ass, little friend. Y'all kicking ass. Man, I would hear him sitting in his room on the phone, calling his friends, family, just, you need to, you know, get on this channel or that channel. My daughter, Alicia Clark, she's playing for this team. She's playing, you need to watch the game. She's in the WNBA. I know she attributes a lot of her characteristics, her work ethic, her hard nose to him. We saw him here, we saw her love for him, and basketball being their thing. Like, he was always her rock. That was a tough battle last night. Time to climb back aboard. I'll be watching, love you, bye. Season had ended in DC, and I was actually on my way to Seattle, and I get a call from my, my younger sister, and she's like screaming, crying, and all I could hear her say was, He's not breathing, he's not breathing. And she said he's gone. <laughs> I just remember in that moment, like, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and I was like, there's no way this is real. <laughs> it wasn't something that I was ready for. And so to be in a position where one of your favorite people on earth is just snatched from you in a way that you couldn't do anything about uh, was something that I had such a hard time and still have a hard time with. My dad was cremated and so I had seen like you could get their ashes put in jewelry. A friend of mine helped get these necklaces made so I asked my siblings and my brother-in-law pick something that like reminded them of their relationship with my dad. Each of us have that peace, that connection with him, and then having his ashes in these necklaces, it makes you feel like he's always with you. <laughs> and like to combat the sadness that I feel of him not being here, like that whole, I wanted something to like be a joyful reminder. And so my tattoo is that, it's of my, like my favorite picture of him and his smile. He is my biggest why. Um, he was my biggest fan. She's trying to make up her mind of where she should go in free agency. She was over in Israel playing, and she was stopped at a crosswalk, and a man in Israel walked across the street in a Raiders jersey. That was dad telling her where she needed to be, how she could impact this team, and she took that as a sign from her dad of where she could fit the best this season. This being Vegas and the Raiders and where we grew up and, you know, Becky, my first vet. There was just so many things, so many layers, so many components that just made sense. I would say this is probably her biggest year of growth and I've known her since we were 18 years old. And this is probably the hardest task. Not a championship, not a Euro Cup, but 
living after the biggest person or the biggest influence of your life is not with you to give you that phone call to say, let's do this. I'm glad she has everything that she's doing because it can keep you going. If you stop, the grief can get super heavy. But she knows he would want her to push on, push forward, and get that ring. I can't even imagine being away and having to hear that. It's, it's, it's hard. I don't know how she's doing it, but I think some of us, she's covering up because she doesn't. She knows I'm hurting. They all do. So she doesn't want to burden me with her grief. She's trying to be strong for me and I'm trying to be strong for them. I think my heart hurts for her more throughout this whole process than it does even for me. For me, honoring him was showing up and being strong, because that's what he did. To me, one of the biggest factors is just her as a person in the locker room. We're a tight group and who you allow to infiltrate and become a part of your fabric is very important. She is going to be the most valuable piece to this Vegas Aces team. Four three balls for Alicia Clark and her 300th made three of her career. She's won before, and when you have somebody in your locker room, a veteran leadership that when things need to be said, um, you have that voice and people respect it. And I don't think it's a coincidence that you know, she's been one of the key pieces of for us this entire journey, just filling in whether people have gotten hurt, foul trouble, and who steps up, AC. Clark gives them that versatility. She's going to be hugely important the rest of the way for the Vegas Aces. She's always continuing to learn and to grow, and players like that, they will always be at their highest because they're constantly learning. I enjoy coming to work every single day. Just the way that we pour into one another and the way that every single person is valued on this team for what they bring. When she got the call from Kathy that she was sixth player of the year, I was like, oh, we gotta make a shirt. I just said, whatever you do, put Sly on that shirt. It was just so cool to to see her get the love that she deserved. Because it's hard, it's hard to do kind of a lot of the dirty work and not really get appreciated statistically and things like that, but man, this team loves her and uh, we appreciate her. This wasn't something I set out and was like, okay, this is gonna be my goal, I wanna be sixth player of the year. My goal simply was this year was to step into this new role and be the best at it that I could be. The candidates all were very worthy, like everybody made an impact on their team, but I truly feel like my impact and my versatility in that space of making an impact one through five was something that nobody else was doing. I wanted to make sure that there was some type of physical representation of our dad at the game. I picked a picture where he was in his element, he was playing his kungas, Mike's right there, and you can just see the joy in his face, how happy he was. I wanted that happiness and that joy that that picture exudes to come out and uh, just show her like, you know, he's, he's here, I'm here to support you. We've had conversations, we've both lost our, our dads, which were not just our dads, they were our best friends. They were, you know, our rock basically. And to me what's more impressive is hers is more raw. Hers is new. My, mine has been a couple years and I understand the healing process. But to watch AC just play the way she did under that type of emotions, you know, that goes with the loss of 
of your best friend. I mean, it's really tough. I think watching her and observing her and listening to her, it's actually almost like motivating her that she knows he's watching. And I think every game, every minute, every rebound, like every charge, whatever she, you know, she does out there, it's for him. And I think a lot of times when you're dealing with that kind of grief and heaviness, it can be really easy to go inward and not be giving of yourself because you're already in shambles. And so I think how she still gives out of her grief has been amazing to watch. Being a positive influence role model to people, to young girls, young children, that they see that they can be something better, greater, whatever they want to be, whatever that may be. Alicia is a, an extreme professional and she's dedicated to her craft and people love her everywhere she goes. That's a testament to, I believe, our parents. They instilled in us, you know, just because don't, don't quit. Things get hard, don't quit. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. You never know when your time's gonna come up to, to be the next one up. The floor leader for the Aces, the no doubt about it, best point guard in the world, out now here for game four. I mean, how does Vegas absorb this loss? I'm the light. In your darkness. That's the reigning sixth woman of the year, and we all know when she plays, they still have great odds. She's a pro's pro in this league, and she's also one of the best defenders. She's not faced at all by the position she's been thrust in on this stage. This is somebody who has won multiple championships in this league and also excels in the finals that she's played. You never know when you're going to get this moment, within, when you're going to get this opportunity, regardless of what team you have. We've been going through adversity all year, so I think we're kind of built for it. So uh, I, I look at it as a great opportunity, somebody else's opportunity to step up as well. Alicia Clark up into her former teammate Brianna Stewart. Well, this is why exactly we went out and got Alicia Clark was for moments like this. Alicia Clark has not let Brianna Stewart get any easy looks throughout the course of these finals. I mean, Stewie was 3 of 17 and Alicia was a big reason for that. She is relentless defensively. Stewart on the drive, misses the layup and a charge is called. And then even down the stretch, like she had some huge buckets. Into the lane, Clark lays it in. It's a one possession game. I was literally in like raw mode. She cannot score this bucket. Six seconds left. Laney to the corner. Vandersloot, no! An unforgettable finish to game four. I just turned around and ran. And the first person I saw that was like this was Becky. <laughs> Her being my first vet, being in San Antonio, you know, then being here in Vegas, she was the one that I celebrated with first. The WNBA has a back-to-back -back champion. Your dad is How do you dedicate this win to your dad? I showed up every day because I know he loved watching me play. And I said, you know what? Every day, every game before the game, my prayer is pops. I hope I make you proud. I hope you're sitting there. Joy is watching me play. That's my prayer every day. So that's how I show up on the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Of course, they're on your defense, bitch. Oh my God. Oh my God. He believed that I was more than capable of being in this position. And so to be able to cap off this year, this phenomenal year, with a championship, I know he would have been like through the roof. Knowing I have him as my guardian angel, every time I step on this floor, I'm like, sucks wherever's in front of me. <laughs> they don't mess around and let this little country girl be a three-time champ. If it wasn't for this group, if it wasn't for y'all's support, I would not have made it through this year. Pops, this one's for you, baby!